put together a little exercise. Okay, it was good to see you guys had your scales out coming in, and we're playing with this. And someone came to me and said, justfully so, let me know what scale this is and I'll figure it out. I'm going to make it easy. Okay, you see the green 22 door up on top? See the door marked 22? None of our seasoned people, but the new guys, that's a three foot door. Tell me what scale this is. In this case, you measure the opening. But I said season, guys. Okay. What's everybody else got? The answer is. Don't believe everything you hear. It's not a 36 inch door. Okay? I did this for a reason. Okay? Everybody that looks at something like this assumes certain things. First thing we assume is we assume that the drawings are always right. They're not. Okay? Architects, designers, they tend to, they tend to elaborate the way they want to without looking at what other people are drawing. For example, if I have an architectural drawing that has that as a, as a three foot door, the designer's drawing will not necessarily has that as a three foot door. Okay, so when you look at this, you have to look at it from the eyes of multiple drawings and sometimes you have to go back and figure it out. Okay, this is a quarter inch scale, okay? The door is not 36 inches. The door is 30 inches, okay? But what I'd like you guys to do in your free time is look at this. I provided you two pages. The back pages has all the answers on it, okay? I'd like you to take this in your free time, take out your scale, and see if you get the same answers that are on here. Okay? This is an exercise to see if you understand what's going on. Okay? It's easy to say, yeah, I get it, but to do it and reference it will help you as a learning tool figure out what you have. Got that? Okay. So, last week we talked about different types of measurements. This is a tape we use for laying out exterior, usually earthwork, big, more than 25, 35 foot buildings. And this is what I was talking about last week. I'm only showing you this so it doesn't throw you off. If you look at this side, okay? It's what everybody's used to, right? One inch up to 12 inches to a foot, right? Now look at this side. This side divides the foot, the, the one foot segment into tenths. Okay, so if you look at on this side, what shows five, that's half a foot. If I turn it over, it's six inches. Okay, so it's important when you look at this or any tape measure, you understand what you're looking at. Because if I tell you lay out 12 foot six inches, and you look at this side and you say, all right, 12 foot and then six, that's not six inches. That's six tenths of a foot. So it's very simple when you look at this, just make sure you're counting the 12 and not the 10. We got that? I'm not gonna go too much into it. I'm only showing it to you for clarity so that when you look at it, you don't get confused later on, okay? So we'll start off with drawings today. Does everybody pretty much Clear with what we talked about last week, or does anybody have anything we need to go through? Okay. This is a drawing, an actual drawing for 1860 South Ocean Boulevard. This is provided by the architect. Different companies set up drawings different ways. You can't, this is pretty standard, however, it will deviate from company to company. Okay. 
And there's multiple drawings that, just multiple types of drawings you're going to see. Architectural drawings, if you look, start with an A in the title block. Everybody see that? Okay. There's architectural, there's civil. Civil is when you have drainage, grades, exterior elevation, things like that, okay? Instead of having an A, those will have a C, okay? Structural will have an S, that's how you build the building. You'll have low voltage, you'll have plumbing. Plumbing will start with a P. Mechanical for air conditioning will start with an M. You'll know what drawing you're looking at by looking at part of the tile block, okay? For right now, we're going to look at architectural. Excuse me. Every drawing has certain things on it. One has the job name. Two, it has usually has the architect or whoever is responsible at this point. Okay. It'll say revisions. Now, the initial drawing will not have any revision date. The initial drawing is actually the base drawing that everybody's working on. As changes are made, there'll be a revision. One thing you have to be careful of is that they don't always revise the entire set. They'll revise one page. So if you go to one drawing, it may have a revision. That doesn't mean every drawing is going to have a revision. So when you're looking at this, you have to make sure you're looking at the most current set and the most current revision. <coughs> Wendy keeps a drawing log which if, he, if you're looking at this, you should be referencing the log to make sure you have the most current. Basically, it's a sheet of all the drawings, which I believe we're going to update in Bluebeam going forward, and that will show you what the most current drawing is. Certain companies like MMID will revise one page and call the whole set revised. So you really have to look at what you're, what you're actually seeing to make sure you understand what you have. Okay, so you have the title, you have the number, which will tell you what it is you're looking at. You'll have the original date, and if there's a change, you have a revision date, okay? There's a title page, which basically says this is the job. These are the drawings within the page, within the set, okay? If you look, it says index of drawings. You should see this on every architectural. You will see it on other drawings. It'll tell you what each page in the drawing is. It's like a context. When you, look, when you open a book in high school, and the first page is a table of context, same thing. Okay? It'll tell you what page. So if you have to get to something, it's easier. From the architectural point of view, when they're doing a permit set, you will most likely list all the drawings listed in the original permit set. So although it's not in his package, it will list the permits, the electrical, the mechanical, and the structural. Okay? Everybody got that? SP basically means site plan. This is the entire property. This is how it's laid out, the building structures on the property. Tom has, in this drawing, chosen to add some other details on this page. It's not common. Usually the site plan takes up the whole page. Okay? It will list a few things. It will give data regarding the building. It will give you data regarding the size of the building, how much of it is under air, how much of it is, is uh, total. And this is meant for building department use, but we also use it for calculations and estimating because certain things are based on square foot price for rough numbers, okay? So site plan will give you everything. Now, we had talked about scale. If you look here, it'll say site plan, 120, which means one inch equals 20 feet. That goes back to the engineering scale, okay? But if you look down here, it says 1 16th equals one foot, and it clearly says inches. Okay, so within the drawing, you'll see different things. Over here, it says NTS, which we learned last week meant not to scale. Right? So in this case, you're actually looking at the dimensions noted on the plan. Okay? And again here, not to scale. Every drawing is broken up this way. Either it says the scale over here at some point, or it will reference at the drawing what the scale is. Everybody understand that? 
If it says not to scale, do not try to scale it. Don't try to find out what scale it is by seeing what's close. Okay, it usually doesn't work out well for you, okay? Okay. And when you get to architectural drawings, you start with A1, A2, A3. These are floor plans, okay? In this case, for some reason, they didn't print A1, but we'll go with that. There's three or four different types of drawings you're gonna see. First thing is a plan view, okay? Plan view is basically the house or the property looking down, okay? Architectural plans generally won't reference the entire site plan. They'll reference mostly the structure. Okay, so if you took the building, cut it flat and looked down, these are all the walls, these are everything you're gonna see looking down. Sometimes they will elaborate more and put cabinetry in, sometimes they won't. This does not include floors, this does not include ceilings. There's different drawings for that. So if you look at this plan, this is similar to what I just gave you, okay? There'll be notations on it as far as size, okay? It'll say scale, for example, like we said on every page, this is one eighth equals a foot. This is why we concentrated last week on measurements and scale, because until you understood that, you couldn't understand this. Now that you understand scale, from here you can take a point to a point and you can see what you want. Now understand that scale is never your first axis of, of measurement. Scale gives you some judgment, and you can't define that a wall is 10 foot, eight and three quarters of an inch from a scale. Okay, you can probably get it from Bluebeam, you can get it from AutoCAD, but you can't get it with what you have on site. So you always try to use what's dictated. Okay, everybody kind of get that? From this plan, you can tell a few things, okay? You can tell what the windows are, you can tell which walls are there, you can't tell from this plan how anything within this plan is built. That comes later on. Those are the details which we'll come up with when you go back, okay? You can tell certain things. There's notations on the plan which will reference things as you go forward. What I'd recommend is I'm gonna show you some of these if you can get a few pages and if you want, I'll print out a full set for you to look through. These things are all reference points going forward. For example, by the window it says M. This one says L, this one says L. When you go to the window schedule, which is just a breakdown, of, a breakdown list of here's the numbers, A, B, C, D, E, or however the reference is, and on the right side is the size of the window, the glass, et cetera. It's basically a schedule as if you were ordering windows. Now, in a real world, this will all work, okay? In a perfect world. In the real world, this very rarely works. We always have to go back and make sure that windows here match the elevations, match what you want. There's a cross-reference, which we'll get into a little bit more later, but the structural drawings that say how to build this building will tell you how to build that wall, that wall, that column. It'll tell you what it is. Once you get into those dimensions and those drawings, you'll realize there's a lot of cross-referencing you have to do. You have to say, based on these four windows here, or three windows here, the opening should be just for a number 12 foot two. When you go to the structural drawings, you have to make sure you can fit it into a 12 foot two. Very rarely are they accurate, because in a perfect world, the architect is supposed to take all these drawings and coordinate them very rarely happens, okay? When we did 1660, we had to change 17 beams. When we did 980, which we just finished, we took the window schedule, compared it to the structural, and there was four inches difference between the two. In some cases, the windows were bigger than the openings. In some cases, they were smaller. In both cases, you have to adjust it, but you have to do that work early. So. Not to go too far ahead, the important thing here is that you understand what you're looking at, okay? There will be notations on here for ceiling heights, okay? That will be regard back to elevations. There's numbers, for example, on the toilet, this is say 13. When you go to your plumbing schedule and you look at 13, it will tell you what the, what the toilet is. So this is just a cut through, and you'll have one on every floor. It tells you, looking down at the site, what it is, OK? 
Okay? So A2 would be the second floor. Okay? A3 will be the third floor. Okay? We'll get into this later. And A4 will be the roof. Now, everybody see these symbols? You'll see these on multiple drawings. And these are important. Okay? There's an arrow facing this way on this drawing, if everybody can see it. This one says 2A7. What that means is, if I go to the A7 drawing and look at detail 2, it says if I cut this building and look this way. Okay? So, so this one says 1A7. This one says 2A7. So if I go to A7 and I look at 1, that's what you're seeing when you cut through the building. It says if I cut the building in half. This will be the roof trusses, the first floor, the lower, all the way down to the basement. So if I was going to do this here, and I cut, had a line going straight through the building, you would see those faces, you would see the column, you would see the walls. This is an elevation. Again, this is an eighth inch scale. Everything is in scale. Okay? This is the window schedule that we just talked about. So where it says window A, okay? The size of the window is five foot by eight foot. The rough opening, meaning the masonry opening that you're putting it into, is five foot two by eight foot one. It's a fixed glass panel. Is it an egress? No. Is it an impact resistant? Yes. This legend, or this schedule, reflects every door and window on the site. So when you do this, one of the things you have to do, one of the things is go back and look at that. This is the door schedule. So when we looked and we saw door numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, this will tell you the door. It'll tell you, it'll give you remarks as far as what the door is, if it's solid core, if it's glass, if it's whatever. It'll give you the size, three foot by eight foot, whatever it is. It'll give you the opening, which is the framing opening. Okay, the thickness of the door, which you're going to need if you're doing hardware, okay, whether it's painted or finished. And again, is it an egress door, et cetera, et cetera. So when you go back to these drawings and you see different things, you'll see here, for example, door number seven. When you come over here, you look at door number seven, it's a nine, nine foot six by 12 foot double French door. Meaning it opens like that. Okay. Every door on here relates to here. So what they're giving you is they're giving you graphic directions of what's supposed to be here. Okay. You'll have the cutaway. It'll give you the door types. It'll give you the window types. Okay. And in some cases, just by the notation of how it's hatched, it will tell you if it's masonry or sheetrock, and we'll get into that more. Okay? Elevations. Elevations are the way you look at it up and down. Okay? If you look at the front of the house, you're looking at the elevation. Okay? These elevations are also in scale. So you can scale this just like you could scale a floor plan, just like you can scale what we did there. These are all noted also. For example, this is eighth inch. Because the standard size paper is 24 by 36, most of what you're seeing is going to be eighth inch. Okay, but don't take it for granted that it is. Okay, this will scale, for example, if I take this and I know it's an eighth of an inch, I know that most of the windows here are 12 feet high. We just saw that when we looked at the schedule. So if I go here, it shows it 12 feet high. When we did this, originally, I went back and checked, and there were discrepancies between the elevations and the floor plans. The schedule that we just looked at showed windows being 10 feet high, where the elevation showed them 12 feet high. Okay, so you've got to go back, you've got to double check. Okay, this will show you the roof type, and here, it will give you the cross-section. So if you look on this side, 
There's a bunch of elevations here. Everybody see that clouded area right there? A little cloud drawn around and it says one next to it. Okay. What that means is this is revision one. That dimension was changed. Okay. So if you go to this page, you'll see revision number one. This is what we were talking about to begin with. Okay. And it'll say slab elevation lowered on floor plan. On this job, we lowered the slab in the basement to get a taller ceiling height. So in doing that, that elevation changed. Everybody see that? Now, if I go here, it didn't affect this page, or it did. It says door and window schedule. So this changed because that changed. Okay? And if you keep looking, this one has no revision on it because that change didn't affect this drawing. So like I said, you have to go through, as you're looking at a page, to make sure you have the most current revision. When Wendy releases a schedule, it will say, you know, on the A4 drawing, we're up to revision one. Everybody see that? Okay. Now, <clears throat> this will give you dimensions that you could use in, in laying out heights and understanding the project. For example, it will tell you the elevation at top of the garage floor is nine foot, okay? The elevation NAVD, <laughs> there's two scales we use for elevations, okay? Right now, don't, let's not get into them too much, but there's NAVD and NGVD. Okay, NAVD is used by most it, most companies, engineering companies in this area. There have been drawings where I've seen both on the same drawing, which is a huge mistake because they both start at different elevations. Disregard that for right now, okay? What a lot of architects will do is what's been done here. The main level, the first floor when you walk in the building, they will dictate to be elevation zero. So you know where you're starting from. Okay, if you look here, it says lower floor minus 12 foot six, because from zero, you're going down 12 and a half feet. That's to the finished floor? This is the slab. Everything he's giving you is to the slab. Now it could be, you know, in some cases, some architects may call the lower level zero, and then say the first one is positive 12 and a half feet. Okay, you have to look at it to make sure you understand what they're referencing. So I feel like I can pull and take across the form board and know my linear dimensions, but how in the heck do I know I'm zero or I'm 12.6 to that level? Where's my demarcation? They will give you a point. It's giving you two references, okay? In this case, it's telling you that the lower level slab is at, for example, on this drawing, it's not showing the first floor. It's always going to give you an elevation. Okay, it's, it's going to give you an elevation that they're giving you here within the building, zero plus 12 and a half minus 12 and a half, but it will always give you a graphic elevation of what the lower level is. In this case, for example, it says the elevation is nine and a half feet to the garage. Okay, that's your, when you get your surveyor, he's going to give you a point. That point is going to reference that dimension. That's always an NAVD. Let's not go into NGVD right now, okay? The building is set at an elevation given to you and marked by the surveyor. The surveyor will give you multiple points along the property to use as a reference line, and you're gonna work on your slab elevation based on that line. Once you get that line established, then you can work with a minus 12 plus 12, but that first floor slab is based on this dimension given to you and the dimension and the reference points given to you by the surveyor. Okay? Again, north elevation, south elevation, they'll give you all four elevations. This will help you because as you're looking at the building and you're trying to figure out what's above grade, what's below grade, this will help you figure out. Now, when you go to your civil plan, which we'll get to next week, 
it will give you the grades, in other words, the elevations of all the grass, the lawn, the driveway. It'll tell you how the property is contoured. Okay? It will directly relate to this line right here. So if you're trying to figure out what's below grade, what's above grade, this will help you. Okay? And again, these are more cutaways like we just said, depending on where it's done. This is a section drawing. Okay? So for example, on this one, the lower level is minus 11 feet to the slab. See, it says minus 11 feet lower floor to top of slab. So it shows you what's there. Okay? Each one of these shows you how the building is constructed. It shows that there's the beam on the bottom, which is going to be shown in the structural drawings, the grade beam. It shows you the block wall, it shows you the beam above, the terrace elevations, the metal trusses, the wood trusses on the ceiling gives you notations to all of them. It even shows you how the drains are going in. Okay? This is merely used for elevation purposes. Okay? It will give you multiple notes along the way, but if you took the building and you took the corner of the building and went from floor to roof, this is what it's going to be. Okay? Again, this is used from an architectural point of view. This does not match the structural drawing. And I'll explain that one. If you look here, you'll see it shows two feet between, and it shows a bar joist running across here. That's this zigzag piece. This is half the size it is on the structural drawing. So this is a reference, and you have to then go back and check all the other ones. Normally, or in a perfect world, all these drawings are coordinated. It's almost never going to be coordinated. Okay, it's up to you and me and whoever is overseeing the project to take out the structural drawings, take out the civil drawings, take out the mechanical drawings, take out the architecturals, lay them next to each other, and check. In doing that, we found out that these don't work. So we had to go back to the architect. Don't take this for granted. Okay? Don't just assume that everything is correct. I'm telling you right now, when I started in this business, I was so afraid to open my mouth because I thought everybody was smarter than me. Okay? They're, all, they're all architects, they're all professionals, they all know. They don't. These guys are knocking the stuff out, trying to get it out. When it all comes together, it's up to you to figure out what's right and wrong. And believe me, you will. Okay? Okay, these are individual details which will be provided for construction. Sometimes these are right, sometimes they're not. And I'll give you an example. Window waterproofing detail. This isn't necessarily the detail we're going to use. We'll get a drawing from the window company which will give us um, an NOA, which basically, um, which is a notice of an acceptance from the engineer that tells you how he wants that window installed. Okay. Some of these, you look at these details to see exactly how they're referencing it on the floor plans. For example, there's always a drop at the window at a door. After that drop, it's up to the window company to give you a shop drawing. So these are a good guide, okay, but they're not the Bible. They're part of the Bible. From this, you have to still go back to the other drawings and see what's going on. Okay? And if you look at these, you'll even see notations on here, not drawn to scale, not drawn to scale, not drawn to scale. Okay? These are typical details used in construction for doors, windows, etc. Okay? These are not the way 90% of the times you're going to build this house. Okay? You're going to get a shop drawing from the door company, you're going to get a shop drawing from the window company, and you're going to have to incorporate all these things into your plan. Wendy, did you get the plan? Remember you were going to have it for me this morning? Can you pull it out? Okay, so architect's plan is a very rough detail of how it's going to be built. Once you get the shell up, you get the windows in, you get everything in, you've gone through the approvals on the windows, you've gone through verifying the details, you've gone through the heights, you've got it together. 
Now you've got mechanical drawings, you've got structural drawings. You'll have your inspections throughout. The mechanical plans are going to show you duct work. Okay? In the end, you're going to get a drawing from the designer. Now I bring this up for a couple of reasons. Okay? One, you can see the difference in scale. Okay? Drawings are generally quarter inch to scale. So if you look on here, if it's a quarter of an inch versus an eighth of an inch, it's going to be twice the size. Right? Okay. This is a reduced set. This is what we were talking about last week. This is a set printed to the actual size of the scale. This is a set reduced to help you use it and look through it without carrying this big thing around. Okay? This, although it notes the scale, is not the scale because it's meant to be drawn, it's meant to be printed this big. Does everybody understand that? So if I took this drawing, which was meant to be printed this way, I could use the scale noted. Okay, if I, it gets reduced to this, that scale isn't going to work. Does everybody understand that? Okay, so we just went through the architect's drawings. Design drawings are set up very similar, okay? It's got the job name, the company of the designer, a drawing number, okay, and a drawing index. This drawing will give you, on the front, just like a table of contents in a book, it'll give you a breakdown of what all the drawings that follow this are, okay? This will help you rather than hunting through the set a million times to go more in depth and find it. Now, understand this drawing set is only the lower level of this building. By the time this building design is complete, there'll be three times as many drawings here. So this print will come down to here, and this will be a lot bigger, okay? There's a lot of things that I'll go through with you now that you're gonna, you're gonna see. More of what you're going to build is gonna be worked off of this drawing once you get the shell up than the architect's drawing. Because in the end, this is what you're trying to interpret. Okay, this is going to show you what the building looks like inside. So if you're framing something and you need to know, you know, the architect's drawing shows it three inches, this is going to give you an elevation to show you what the design intent is. Okay, so field decisions are made to achieve this final outcome. Does everybody get that? When you finally get these drawings, you have to then go back to the architectural, the mechanical, to show ductwork. You have to go back to all these other drawings to make sure they work. A few things. The architect's drawings pretty much show you how to put the building up and get you through the building department. The schedules for the windows and such, they all work once you go through them. The design drawing are what you, the designer and what the owner intends to see when they're done. So cross-referencing the information on this drawing with the information on the other drawings and making the modifications that have to be made are important. Okay, you will get more things resolved when looking at the paper than you will when it comes up on site in six months and you say, oh God, how do I do that? When you look at a drawing like this, we had shown you the arrows on the roof for elevations. I'm only showing this so you can go back and look at it on drawings that you're working with. Again, you have the arrow. You'll see a notation 1, 5, 12, or 4, 5, 3. If I go to 4, 5, 3, it means I go to drawing 5, 3, and I look at, and I look at number 4. That's what you see. Okay, so now when you're laying it out, you know where there's cabinetry, you know where there's wood, you know what the design intent. Sometimes there's a mood shot to say what they're trying to achieve. Okay, these are all elevations that you'll find only on a designer plan. Okay, because in the end, this is what they want to see. This is why I say the architectural plan will get you there. But in the end, you have to go through the designer's plan, sometimes laying out a door a little bit differently or setting up a different type of jam. All those things have to relate to the designer's drawing. Okay? Okay, it's a quarter after seven. We ran a little bit late. Um, take these with you. Okay, go through them, see what you got. Um, most importantly, when you're on a job, you have some time free, look at these, look at what you're building and see how they correlate, all right?
Yes. Yeah.